one-on-one -on -one with Martin Shkreli. The former Turing Pharmaceutical CEO was found guilty of two counts of securities fraud and one count of conspiracy earlier this month after a more than four-week trial. Now he is speaking out exclusively in his first television interview since that verdict. Martin Shkreli joins me right now live. Good to see you, Martin. Thanks very much for joining us. Good morning, Maria. Yeah, so give us your reaction to being found guilty on those charges. How are you doing? Well, you know, there were, uh, I'm, feel I'm feeling great, you know, doing great. Uh, there were eight charges. The government uh, made this large, fanciful, and now we learn false uh, tale of me stealing from my own drug company to pay off these investors. And the jury found that uh, uh, story implausible. And they rendered, as you know, five out of eight counts uh, not guilty and three out of eight guilty. And I think that, uh, you know, we still have uh, this, the second chapter of this is starting now, where I think those three charges are, are very vulnerable to attack. And uh, those, I hope that those charges are reversed or dismissed. And are you trying to get those three charges reversed right Oh, now? absolutely. What, what are you doing in terms of getting those reversed? Well, you know, there was a case just last week where the Southern District threw out a fraud case because of the FBI's over-aggressive search practices. And in fact, in my case, I didn't receive one subpoena or one search warrant. And in this country, you get due process and you get a chance to provide your documents to law enforcement. And instead, my documents were stolen and they're provided to the government illegally. And I think that when uh, the powers that be look at this more closely, they'll decide that this case was a trumped up uh, SEC case. The SEC exists for a reason. They're there to protect securities laws. And the Department of Justice exists to get big bad criminals who do horrible things. And uh, they can also be political, as we know. And they decided to take this case on instead of making it a run-of-the-mill, normal, boring SEC case. They made it into this gigantic criminal conspiracy. And the jury found that ridiculous. So do you think you were targeted for securities fraud because of the controversy that, that came before about you raising the price of Daraprim? Uh, in fact, the SEC told me so. Uh, which is really remarkable. Um, there's one very senior person at the SEC who's now left. He's at a big law firm. And he said to my lawyer that if I kept my mouth shut, none of this would have happened. And I think it's a sad day in this country where just being a flamboyant and uh, personable uh, figure results in uh, somebody saying, oh, let's look at this guy's records and let's see what we have on him. Well, it's a good point that you make because, you know, we all watched you sitting there when you were testifying in front of Congress. You said, oh, I should have brought my video game and, I, you know, sort of the smirks. Do you regret that now that you know that, in fact, perhaps that did go into uh, the, the uh, end result? I, I think in life you have two choices, which is, you know, one, you can, you can try to do the best for your business and, and shed any idea that you're an individual and become one with your corporation and try to be that sort of, you know, stoic figure. Or you can sort of um, give up this sort of fakeness and, and just be yourself. And I'm the kind of person that tries to be himself. And for better or worse, sometimes it, it, it has benefits, sometimes it has drawbacks, and this is a drawback. The, fa the fact that you were not charged uh, with looting your former company, this is important because are they now still deciding if you have to forfeit more money? Uh, that hasn't been decided yet, right? It hasn't. I don't think I'll have to forfeit any money. I don't think I'm going to jail. Uh, I think that, um, you know, this was a case that, you know, we see an insider, we saw a major insider uh, trading case the other day that was settled by the SEC. No jail time. Just, a, a, you know, a, in fact, it was settled on neither admit nor deny wrongdoing. So there are hundreds and hundreds of SEC cases that never get brought to the criminal uh, division of the Department of Justice. No one gets arrested. Uh, big banks pay billions of fines. Nobody gets arrested. You know, this was a case that, about targeting a guy, an individual, and seeing what they could find. And they got, they threw all the spaghetti at the wall they could. Eight charges. They got three to stick. One I don't think is a legal claim. Which one? Uh, there's a conspiracy claim the government brought that I tried to affect the stock price of Retrofen. The stock, when I took over Retrofen, uh, the stock went from three to 30. Um, the, the idea that there was a conspiracy to manipulate the shares, the government didn't prove that. Those charges will be dropped. The hedge fund charges, again, I was convicted of, of lying to my hedge fund investors. Those investors made four times their money. I made $30,000 running that hedge fund for four years of backbreaking work. There's not many people in this room that would take that deal. Mm -hmm. So uh, my investors are happy. Some of them emailed me and congratulated me on, on getting acquitted of the most of the charges. Um, many of them reluctantly testified because the FBI pressured them to do so. It's really, I think, a dirty system. And uh, if the truth were, were, were to be told, uh, I think I would have been acquitted on all eight charges. I'll take five out of eight and uh, move forward. Walk through us what it was like. We were watching the trial almost five weeks long. When you first heard the news, with the verdict, uh, can you walk us through that? Sure. Tell us how it was. Yeah, well, we, I heard the first not guilty. And, well, I'll take a step back. We saw the jury come out of the courtroom, and I told my lawyer, Ben, I said, it's bad news. And I looked at their, their eyes, and I said, 
I think this is bad news. And uh, Ben more or less said, shut up. <laughs> and I, uh, I heard the first not guilty, and I said, okay, you know, I still have that feeling of bad news coming. Then I heard the second not guilty, and I said to Ben, congratulations, because I, I thought the rest of the, the verdicts would be not guilty. Then we heard the third guilty, and I said, oh, my God, what, what is this? And, um, again, you know, that third guilty was this concept that I uh, oversold the hedge fund to these investors, that I, I, I made these claims that weren't true. I don't think that's true, by the way, but I respect the jury's verdict. And, you know, I've been reading all these books, including your, your, your former guest, who I don't think falls into this camp, but many billionaires' uh, biographies where their first – deals, their first fortunes. A lot of young business people are very long in the tooth. When I was 27, 28, I probably made a lot of mistakes. I was probably a little overzealous, a little overselling, maybe exaggerating, but I don't think it, it went to a level of, of criminal fraud. Um, and I don't think there's a business person in the world who hasn't exaggerated at one point in their life. Um, but having said that, you know, of course, you know, uh, some of these statements I wouldn't make as a now 34, now very wealthy, now very successful, I don't necessarily need to be as aggressive and as, as uh, um, sort of exaggerating. Uh, as I used to be, and and uh, I think that you know those charges are are again trumped up and kind of you know ridiculous um, on their face. Uh, nobody feels bad for the people that made four times their money. Right, but you but you are pretty aggressive in terms of some of the statements that you made. I mean, you said you know uh, look the, the, they're going to have to apologize to me. You boasted that prosecutors would have to apologize to you when this case was over. You know, and, and I'm wondering in terms of all of the commentary that. You know, you standing out there being tough, pushing back, did that get you in trouble? Sure. You know, but I, I think it's important to make, take a stand and be yourself and not, not cower in front of the government. You know, and that's a little bit of what uh, Republican ideology is about. I'm a Republican. Uh, the, that courtroom is a very liberal courtroom. And the people that prosecuted me are very, very liberal. And I don't well, they also had a really hard time even getting the jurors. There were so many people who knew you, knew what you were saying because you were out there. I think and they that didn't even, they, were, they thought you were guilty without hearing a trial. I think that was fake news. So we, I, I sat there and we, I listened to all of those jurors. Most of them did not want to spend the summer in a courtroom. Uh, there were a handful of jurors that said, oh, I know who that guy is and I'd like to get off jury duty, so I'm going to say that I can't be impartial. But most, I'd say 90% of those jurors just didn't want to be there for the summer. They had summer vacation plans. Um, so I think that, you know, um, again, it's fun to write that story if you're a New York, New York tabloid reporter, but the reality is uh, something far different. But